Good evening, Good evening. Uh, Welcome to the UCAT sessions. My name is Terrell Joseph, and I'm the campus minister here at the Newman Center. Um, and on behalf of the Newman Center and the Challenge Movement, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you here visiting with us today. In the forward to the UCAT, Pope Benedict XVI sends us this invitation. Study this catechism. This is my heartfelt desire. This catechism, study this catechism with passion and perseverance. Form study groups and networks. Share with each other on the internet. You need to be more deeply rooted in the faith than the generation of your parents. To respond to this invitation, the Mission Jeunesse Youth Ministry Office has offered UCAT sessions with Arch Archbishop Christian Lekin and his auxiliary, Bishop Thomas Dowd. Since 2012, many faithful have gathered at Mary Queen of the World Cathedral to pray and study the Catechism. This year, the UCAT sessions are traveling to different communities. The Newman Center and the Montreal Catholic Challenge Movement are happy to welcome Archbishop for his first UCAT session of the year. So now I'd like to call on one of our students, Lizzie Karnagorski, to give a short introduction about the Challenge Movement and also the Newman Center. Montreal Catholic Challenge Movement is a citywide community of young adults aged 18 to 30 with a mission to bring each other into closer communion with Christ and his church and to provide ongoing support and encouragement in Christian life, accomplished through weekly encounters and two amazing weekend retreats per year. The Montreal group is of a greater challenge community was started in 1993 by three young seminarians who lived in Ottawa Challenge Weekend and started the ball rolling in Montreal. In the 15 years since, Montreal Challenge has grown into a huge, welcoming community of friends who seek to meet Christ on a personal level, to grow in their Catholic faith, and to cherish it in their friendships and in their everyday lives. The next retreat is at the end of February, and is, at, is in March, and we warmly invite you to join us. If you have questions, you may talk to Terrell or I. The Newman Center is the home, home of Catholic spiritual and intellectual life here at McGill University. Inspired by the life and words of John Henry Cardinal Newman, who envisioned the secular university as a seminary for the laity, our mission is to form young adults into articulate and, and committed Catholic leaders in our society. The first, the first Catholic club at McGill began with the Loyola Club in 1897, was renamed the Newman Club in 1929, and the Newman Student Society in 2000. In the spring of 2014, the Student Society voted to change its name to further acknowledge our Catholic identity. So, and we are now called the Newman Catholic Student Society. This year at the Newman Center, we are celebrating 60 years since we have purchased our current building here on Peel Street. Our vision is that each new generation of students will encounter Christ in the adventure of learning and serving and go on to transform the world in his image. Thank you. Thank you, Lizzie. So for our topic for this evening, uh, we will be exploring the question of freedom. So some of the questions uh, that Archbishop Lichtin will be looking at uh, that are found in your UCAT, or he'll be talking about them, are what is freedom and what is it for? But doesn't freedom consist of being able to choose evil as well? Or is man responsible for everything he does? Must we allow a person to use his free will even if he decides in favor of evil? How does God help us to be free men? And now there's a song. <laughs> <laughs>
of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of love, as we gather together this night, we thank you for the great gift of our freedom. Open our hearts to receive your liberating word and direct our lives to live in the truth that sets us free. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will, make, you, you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. A slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Someone have a yucca. Do, do some of you have a yucca? Okay. Some questions were presented at the beginning. I'll take one. We'll take two actually. But answering those two, we'll answer uh, all the others at the same time. So 286. What is freedom and what is it for? And the answer is, is freedom is the God-given power to be able to act of one's own accord. A person who is free no longer acts under the influence of someone else. This might be interpreted in different ways. Does it mean that uh, freedom is when you're able to drink your milk, wherever you want, how you want, when you want. And nobody is uh, an obstacle in front of you to, so that you won't be able to drink your milk. Doesn't mean you can choose anything without any restraint internally or externally. At first we might think so. Being free is uh, doing what you want to do. But yeah, so if it's, but do, do we always are in a position where we can do everything we want to do? Uh, I don't know, the exam period has begun. Soon it will begin. On the eve of the exam, a friend calls you and says, uh, hey, we have a party, come on. And uh, you can say, okay, I'm free, I'm going, or I'm not free, I'm not going. I have to study for my exam, I'm not free, so I cannot go. Or oh, am I free? So someone who stays to study, does it mean that that person is not free? Or can you stay and study and be free? So what is freedom? What is freedom? What kind of freedom are you looking for in your life? Are you looking for freedom? And if so, what kind of freedom are you looking for? Uh, Jesus, everything we, is written in the UCAT, comes from Jesus. It's not always written Jesus at every answer, but <laughs> it's always implied. So everything I'm going to, to say with you is about Jesus, his message and his life. And uh, we'll be about 25 minutes, then we'll have around 20 minutes to, uh, for questions and commentaries. I say commentaries because I don't think you'll learn anything, but, <laughs> but your commentaries will be welcome in the sense that everyone is a specialist of freedom because it's an issue with which we grow. We're always thinking in terms of freedom. So Jesus, uh, St. Paul in Philippians, chapter 2, 5. I have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, 
and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Servant, obedient unto death on a cross. Was Jesus a free man? Was he free? It's not easy to answer that question, because if we think about it, if we want to answer that question, we, we have to reflect on what's the meaning of life. That is, why is it that we have freedom? Why is it that we have freedom? If I threw you a snowball, I might do that afterwards, <laughs> you will protect yourself. Will it be a choice? It will be a reflex. The reflex, you won't have the time to, uh, or the need maybe, huh, to, uh, what, what do I do? Do I stay there receiving the snowball or do I protect myself? It will be a reflex. So, why is not life all about reflexes? Why isn't good a reflex that would be installed in ourselves so that we do good? By reflex, wouldn't it like be simpler? Uh, so, because and, uh, we uh, stay away from evil by reflex. So we wouldn't have to choose it, we ju it would just be a reflex. Wouldn't life be simpler? Like an animal has reflexes to, to live and to survive and, uh, and to eat. And, uh, so, why are we more than reflexes? We have some reflexes, we have. But it's not only about reflex. Why? Not only about reflex. Why liberty? If we go to, uh, to Jesus Christ, what does Jesus Christ reveal? Uh, it reveals not only God, which of course is the ultimate revelation of God. It's God with us to talk to us about God and reveal God with his life, with his word, but with his life. But we also learn about us when we listen to Jesus because he teaches us who we are as human beings. What is it to be human? What's the meaning of the human life? And everything is centered on the revelation of the love of God. Without the revelation of the love of God, we might think or say God exists, but to know that God is love and God loves us, we need the revelation of Jesus Christ. And uh, it puts love at the center. And when, when you talk about freedom, the center will, will be love. And the link between freedom and love. Can you love, if you love by reflex, is still love? Is it love? If you're in a position where, where you don't have any choice but to love, is it love? If someone forces you to love him or love her, <coughs> is it love? Can you separate love from liberty? You cannot. From freedom. You cannot separate love from freedom. It's like uh, a natural understanding of what love is. You cannot impose love on someone. You can reveal your love. You can manifest your love. You can transmit your love. You can express your love. But what, what do you do when you say, you say to someone, I love you, what do you do? You're hoping, you're hoping for an answer. You're hoping that the answer will be love. You're hoping that the answer will be, I love you too. But you can, can you force that answer on the other one? You cannot. That's, uh, that's uh, the challenge of life. Loving, hoping to be loved, but not always be, be loved. But hoping to be loved. And hoping because when you love someone, it's a call to the liberty, to the freedom of the person. The person receives this manifestation of love and chooses to answer uh, or chooses to put a hold on it, I'm not ready, or chooses to take more time. or. It's about two freedoms coming together. Love is about two freedoms coming together. When you link freedom and love together, it helps to get into what it is to, not only to love, but what freedom is. 
Because if we look at Jesus Christ, he's uh, a servant, he came to serve us, he came to, serve, to give his life for us, uh, to the point of, of the going, uh, giving his life on the cross. And when he does that, he's loving us. He's loving us. And he, he chooses to love us. When he does that, he's doing what he chooses to do. He chooses to love us. He chooses to love his Father and to love us for his Father. He chooses to witness to the mercy of the Father. He chooses to reveal the eternal life and love of the Father and to reveal God as being Father and Son and Holy Spirit. And he chooses to reveal by giving his life on the cross. He could have said, I love you a lot. I would give my life for you. I love you a lot. But he did more than that. He did it. He did it. He gave his life for us. That's how, it's, it's not for nothing that uh, when we're in front of the crucifix, it's, it's always meaningful and powerful. We, we never get tired of looking at a crucifix. If you, have, if you don't have one at, at home, it might be a good thing to have one. From the cross, what does he say? He say, I love you. He say also, I, I'm thirsty. And St. Teresa de Vila would say, he's thirsty of our love. He's hoping to find love in us. He's hoping that we'll receive his love and that we'll want to love him in return. So love, love is about expressing love. It's about hoping for an answer of love. And it's about freedom. Love, love is about choosing to love. It's about choosing to answer the love we receive. So freedom, liberty, becomes something much more deeper than saying, uh, I like to do what I want. No, you can't stay at that level. And it's a certain level of liberty. I like to do what I want. Uh, but uh, if you make the link with love, it's not only much more deeper, but it, it's get, it gets us to, to meditate and reflect on, on the life we are having and the meaning of our life. What are we looking for in life? What kind of liberty are we looking for? Are we looking for a liberty where I can say, I do, every, my, I do what I want? Uh, like someone would say, my will be done. <laughs> and. Uh, I've always done, I, I've heard some, you know, I did it my way, it's a song. I did it my way. I'm very happy because I did it my way. You know? uh, so, every, all along my life I've done what I wanted, so that's it. That's the freedom I wanted, that's the freedom I got, and I'm happy with that. Is it, is it enough? Is it enough? Is it enough? or? Uh, it, it, Jesus Christ did in, in a sense, it was, it was his liberty about doing what he wanted. Thy will be done. That's what he says to his father. Thy will be done. Uh, and uh, he's giving his life for us. So for him to be free is to be able to choose to give his life for us. He's able to choose to give his life for us. He's able to give his life for us. And in that sense, when freedom and love are linked together, being able to receive love, because receiving love is, is already a choice. If you're not sure you want someone's attention, you, you don't open up to the love coming from the person. You're just not ready for that. Or maybe you'll never be. It's not the, Timing is not, is not good. Or maybe it's not the right person. But the moment you say yes to receiving the love of someone, it's already a choice. At the moment you say yes to answering that love, it, it is a choice. It's your freedom. And it gives deepness and it gives meaning, it gives depth to your, uh, to your freedom because it gets you into a kind of freedom where you can strive to be free every second of your life. 
Because if freedom is, as it is with Jesus, to be able to choose to love, whatever happens, I am hated by some people, I choose to forgive. I'm crucified by some people, or by the sins of humanity, I choose to give to the utmost my life. I choose to give, offer eternal life to all of humanity. I choose to love. So when liberty becomes a, a, a choice in the sense of I choose to love, every second of my life, I choose to love. I'm not going to the party, I'm going to, to stay to study because I choose to be responsible in my, my uh, responsibilities and in my task. So because I want to be ready to serve with competency. So I choose to love. You can, what am I, what, it will, it, what it, will it be to love now, here and now? What, what will it be to love? I'm tired. What will it be to love? It will be to rest. Maybe it will be to go with all my heart. What will it be to love? So, and I choose to love. So when it's a very powerful link between love and freedom, love and liberty, because it goes deep in your heart and it gives meaning to your life. It gets peace in your life. So when Jesus says that he will make us free, he, he, he means, or is saying many things, but one of the things he's saying certainly is that the kind of love with which he loves is going to make us able to love with that love, the self-giving love. And it will make us free to love with such a love and to be faithful and to be giving oneself uh, without, uh, without looking backwards. And so freedom becomes a very important reality on our lives when it is linked with love, our vocation to love. Every one of you, every human being, has a vocation to love. It can be, this, this vocation can be distracted, can be distracted by uh, desires with a small d, let's say, because there's a big desire of the heart, that's nice, that's good. The small deeds of the small deeds of desires that can be a distraction. When uh, Adam and Eve are in the garden and they are tempted by by the devil, what does it? What does he tell them? He tells them, uh, "Eat that fruit of the tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Eat that. Eat that fruit." Because if you eat it, you'll be gods. You'll be gods. You'll have the power, and what is it? What does it mean here? God? It, you'll have the power to decide what is good and evil. And this is, uh, this is a divine uh, quality. But the wisdom to know what is good and evil belongs to God. But if you eat, uh, in the perspective of temptation, it, it, Adam and Eve are told, eat that fruit and you get take into your hands the power to decide what is good and evil. Then your freedom will be doing your life as you please and you'll be God. But uh, is God free? But God is not able to choose uh, evil. Is he free? He's, uh, he's the most free, he's infinitely free because he's always able to choose to love. In the Old Testament, uh, the, the discovery of the Old Testament is that even when we are unfaithful, God chooses to be faithful. He's faithful to who he is as love and God, our creator and savior. He's faithful and he always chooses to love us. So in that sense, he cannot choose evil. He's infinitely good and he's the most free because he's always able to choose good. So when you choose evil, are you that free? When it's all about yourself in your life deciding what is good and evil, are you that free? 
And you that freedom of movement, or you're not able anymore to choose what is good. Sometimes we know what is good. But sometimes it's difficult to choose what is good. It can be pressures, interior pressures, it can be outside pressures. It's not always easy to, to, to do it. Sometimes we know, but we have the strength to do it. The grace of Jesus Christ, he gives the strength, the peace, the strength, the wisdom, not only to know what is good, but to choose it, to will it, and to do it. Uh, and so he sets us free by the power of his grace. Christ never asks us something he doesn't, where he lets us with our own strengths. Whatever he asks of us, he gives his strength to do it. So he gives his grace. So in, when he loves us and he's calling us to love him, he gives us his grace to love him. When he's calling us to love each other, he gives us his grace to love each other. When he's got, calling us to uh, forgive each other, he gives us his grace to forgive each other. So in the context, for instance, someone is hurt by someone else, by words, by deeds, and it hurts so much that uh, someone uh, I, I don't want to forgive. I don't want to forgive. It's understandable. The, uh, but at the same time, is it, is it freedom? And maybe we can say in prayer, God, I, uh, not only I cannot forgive, but I, don't, I cannot even want to forgive. Help me. And God gives, the, opens the heart, comfort, comforts the heart, the heart, and gives the desire to forgive, and gives the grace to forgive and then find freedom. We find freedom in God, mercy, who makes us able to forgive and to be men and women of mercy. So it's a, so with here freedom becomes something much more, much more profound than just drinking your milk when you want, how you want, uh, when you want. And it touches our life. There is another question, the second one, number 287. Doesn't freedom consist of being able to choose evil as well? Evil is only apparently worth striving for, and deciding in favor of evil only apparently makes us free. Apparently. The, we're made in such a way that we cannot, if we always, always, to do, always want to do what we think is good for us. Uh, we think uh, having a sleepless night is good for us, okay, that's what I'll do. If I don't think it's good for me, I'll don't do it. But if I think it's good for me, I'll do it. So, apparently makes us free. Evil doesn't make us happy, but rather deprives us of what is truly good. It changes us to something futile, and in the end destroys our freedom entirely. So freedom, the, we are created as people with freedom because we're called to love. We're called to discover that we love, and we're called to love. Uh, we are because to love is not only to love. To love is to choose to love. That is what it is to love. I love when I choose to love. I love when I choose to give my life. I love when I choose it. It's not only about pressures or impressions or... Uh, uh, no, it's, uh, it's about choosing to love. And, uh, and this gives meaning to the vo uh, a vocation, vocation to love, this gives meaning to life, and gives a sense of, of love in the most profound sense of why we have freedom. So when we use freedom to learn to choose to love, love God and love others and be faithful and be responsible, then we don't waste away our freedom. If freedom is about doing anything, whatever good or evil, then somehow it's about wasting away our freedom. And being free is a task. 
it's a task. We all know. Well, soon it will be the first of uh, January the first. Maybe some of you will t will take some uh, decisions for the new year. Sometimes some things you want to change in your life, and you're very motivated. And uh, on uh, January second, uh, nothing will have changed. <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy. But is it impossible? No, it's possible because. The grace of Jesus Christ is offered to us. And Jesus Christ, for in Jesus Christ, love was never merely a project. Because it was always love. It was always eternal love made flesh. So when we receive Jesus Christ, when we communicate with Jesus Christ, when we pray with Jesus Christ, when we open our heart to His grace, we participate in an eternal love that is there and that was always there. So it's, so it's, it becomes possible. It's difficult, it's demanding, but it becomes possible because with the grace of Jesus Christ, everything is possible. Love is possible, freedom is possible. So a few, uh, a few reflections and meditations on freedom and love. If there are, are we there? Yeah. If there are commentaries or questions, you're welcome. While the, the micro is coming, I'll complete the Philippians. He became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So the love that he expressed through uh, the cross uh, became uh, fruitful in the resurrection and the life he's giving us. Okay. All right. We're going to have uh, questions and answers. So if I'll be bringing the microphone around, please raise your hand if you have a question you'd like to ask uh, Archbishop Christian in the bank. And I'll bring the microphone to you. You might have to walk to the aisle uh, if the court doesn't reach. So, hands. <laughs> So uh, one thing that's, first of all, thanks very much for, for the talk. Um, one thing that's always confused me is uh, when, when Catholics will say, uh, you know, uh, it wasn't me that was doing this, it was the Holy Spirit. You know? And so this is something that always confused me, because, you know, if you really have freedom, then how is it that, you know, I wasn't doing it, or how is it that the Spirit was doing it, you know? So where, how can we explain freedom in that context? I would say that yeah, love uh, and freedom go together, but also love and humility. They go hand in hand. Because to love is not, only, is not loving with our own strength. Uh, it's to be uh, thankful for the love we receive from God and for the fact that He's helping us to love. So when you say, when someone says, uh, in, uh, uh, thank you, love, for helping me to love, or it's not me, it's God helping me, then uh, it's great, because it's the consciousness of uh, not being able to love by ourselves. Because when you try to love by ourselves, it's okay. But we, we, we make the experience of our frailty, and we discover that we need the love of God to love. Uh, all the projects of mercy, all the projects of uh, sharing our life, uh, my own, our own strength, uh, leave us deceived. Or, uh, so, but it, it's uh, it, Saint Paul would say, "When I, I am strong, I'm, I am weak. When I am weak, I'm strong. When I am weak, I'm strong." That is. When I, when I know that I am weak, I lie on Christ and I am strong because I love with His grace. When I'm strong and I am weak means when I think I am strong, 
I don't pray, I don't pen and rise, then I am weak because I am left with my own strength, which is not enough. If I want to love totally, freely, every day. Nobody knows. <laughs> uh, grace is the life of God, which is given us freely. It's a free gift from God, but it's really His life that is given us. And the life of God is not only about eternal life, it's already a lot, but it's about His love. So when He gives us His grace, it comes from His eternal love, and it comes, uh, is gi it's given to us freely. Uh, St. Paul and St. John also will say it in the, in the scriptures. God loved us first. He loved us before we loved Him. His love is free. And uh, it is the, and in that sense, his, uh, his freedom is so infinite that He's able to love us even when we don't love Him. He's able to offer His love even when we don't think about it. He's, uh, he's able to be present in our lives and always, I would say, uh, always present in what happens in our life, uh, even when we don't think about Him or don't want of Him. He's always able, so that's the grace of God. His love, eternal love, but this free eternal love which is given to us. May I, may I ask questions? <laughs> uh, when you think about liberty, spontaneously, we can say, I could say for instance, what is, what is your definition of love? And everyone will have a definition of love. And, uh, there, and there's some good, I guess, in all definitions of love. But maybe we need to uh, the definition of love of Jesus Christ to, to, complement, uh, to uh, discern. But uh, what is your definition of freedom and is it easy to be free in, today's, in, in your life, personally in your life? Uh, do you feel, do you think, do you know, do you experience that you are free? What a question. <laughs> It's, it's more about, not necessarily in something today, but it's about thinking about it in your life. It's about the meaning of your life. Yeah. And with Jesus Christ, the possibility is given to find the meaning of our life. In, in Jesus Christ, there is no life without meaning. The first thing that God says to us, that Jesus Christ says to us, I dare to say, and Christmas is a time to think about it, to meditate on it, is that it is good that you exist. What God says about creation, uh, it is good, and the, the sixth day, it is very good, after creating, creating man and woman, he didn't see it only then. Because creation is not something that happened 12 billion years ago. And that's not happening now. That's, that's over, no. And every one of your conception is an act of creation of God. Your soul is immediately created by God. God, creation is always there. And, uh, and upon creation, when God creates, He says it is very good. When God created you, with the collaboration of your parents, he said, it is very good. It is very good. Every day God does that and thinks that about each one of you. It is very good that you exist. 
because it is impossible to live if there's no one in our lives that tells us it is good that you exist. It's impossible. To live, you need someone in your life to tell you it's good you exist. It's the role of the, the first role of the parents, and we have a child here. The, fir the first role of the parents is to tell their child it is good that you exist. And that's where the children take the strength to live, to want to live, because it is good that they exist. And, uh, and uh, in that sense, for the young children, the, the parents are, are God. They're God. When he cries, who answers? Parents. And uh, so they're God. So because someone tells you it is good that you exist, it becomes worthwhile to live and love and to choose to live and love. Because somehow, liberty is a freedom is about choosing to love. I would, I would add, I would complete that freedom is also about choosing to live. I know it happens. I know it happens. I meet people and they talk to me. I know it happens that you reach a certain point in your life where sometimes, maybe it happened to you, you don't want to live anymore. You're thinking like that. I don't want, why would I live? Why am I living? Why am I here? How to keep on living with all of this happening around me? feeling trapped in a corner. How can I go on living? You can go on living because there's someone who tells you it is good that you exist. And if you let Jesus Christ talk to your heart, you'll hear him tell that to you. It is good that you exist and you'll receive the strength to live. Not only to love, but to live. Because one of the challenges in today's world I'm not talking here about history. Every part of history has its own challenges, but certainly in today's world, one of the challenges is not only to love, but is also to wish to live. To wish to live. And uh, I've met a 12 years old girl who didn't want to live anymore. That's, that's something very tough on the parents, but everything. So it was a phase, everything is, is settled into place. But just, but so, uh, freedom is about not only about love, but also about the mere fact of living. And we can live, we can choose to live, because we come from the love of God, and we're in, in our way to His love, with Jesus Christ. Thank you. I actually have one more question for you, Sarah. Do you think that if we didn't have the ability to choose to do good or bad, and all we were capable of doing was good, it, granted it wouldn't be the love that we speak of, but it would be a world full of people not hurting each other. Do you think that would be a better world than the world we live in now? The way I understand it is it wouldn't be a better world because it wouldn't be a real uh, word of love because it wouldn't be a chosen love. But there would be no pain. Uh, pain, is, let's see, pain can, leave, can lead you to greater love and greater manifestation of love. Love is so important in our lives, in all our body and soul, that's what we're made for, to love, to receive the love of God and to love. So that even then when you're on a bed stricken, you know, with some illness, I've seen people, let's say they have a crucifix on the wall and they're too weak to pray, but they look at the crucifix and they're praying and they're offering their lives and it puts uh, love in the world. It puts love in the world. In that sense, uh, the pain is, uh, is something which is difficult in life, but the power of Jesus Christ by the cross and his resurrection is that he transformed pain into a way of giving oneself. 
when he gives his life on the cross, he's loving us. So it gives a meaning to pain that couldn't be, that you couldn't have before. Now, so normally, if you, see, you talk about someone's life, you, you will tell his life, and then he died on such a day. And what is important is what he did before. But with Jesus Christ, what's, what is fascinating and what is most important, everything is important, what is most important is his death. Because his death, he died loving. He died loving his father, he died loving us, and he showed, he expressed that the power of love is stronger than suffering and death, because his suffering and his death could not impede him from loving. And so he showed us the power of love. So in our, in our life, the power of love and, uh, can be... Uh, there's Saint Thérèse de Lisieux, she was very sick and uh, she was bed stricken, and uh, at one point she sees a, a small bird. And it's a small bird, so someone will say, well, a small bird came, but she, she's praying, so she does, it's for her, it's not only about a small bird, it's about God telling us, telling her, I know I am asking you a lot, but I am with you. Every time we are in pain, we can make that our prayer. God telling us, I know I am asking you a lot, but I am with you, and my love will, will vanquish in your heart and through you. So love is great. It's the greatness of the vocation because God is love. So I care than anything. Thank you. Sorry, just another question. Um, so I'm just um, I'm wondering about the link between obedience and freedom. Um, I understand that we're called to be obedient in a certain way, and how does that fit in with freedom? When you love someone, what do you want? You want what the other person wants. What do you want? And you're looking, want to buy a gift for Christmas. What would she like? What would he like? To love someone, it, it's to look for what pleases the other. So obedience, it's, a, it's an offering of our will to, to love the other person. And uh, so I would say, uh, again I would dare to say, that in uh, God, the Son, eternally loves the Father, receives His love from the Father, loves the Father, and uh, by you being united with His will. And in the Incarnation, His obedience unto the cross is, uh, is an incarnation of His obedience in heaven. It's, it's an obedience through pain, because we, there is pain in the world. It's an obedience through suffering, because there is suffering in the world. And he wants to bear our sufferings and our pains on him, to bring us, to bring his love through our pain and suffering. But it's, it's looking for the will of his Father, being united with the will of, of his Father. So for us to love Jesus Christ is to love to look for his will. So he will say in, in Saint, the Gospel of St. John, the, t the link is very, very, let's say, explicitly done. It's not always explicit, but in, in St. John it's very explicit. Uh, I, 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 love, I obey my Father, because I, I obey the commandments of my Father, because I want the world to know that I love him. Uh, like I obey my, my Father, obey me, so that you'll love me. So there's this link that is done between love and obedience. So when you choose to put at the center of your life, because there are, let's say, three different ways. You can say about my will or the our will. You can say, my will be done. That's one way of putting it. You could say also, my will be done with the help of God. That's one kind of prayer. God, this is what I want, help me. Or you can say, uh, with Jesus Christ, thy will be done. And uh, so the, the obedience in faith, by, motivated by love, becomes a great, uh, a great way 
to love God and to be united to the will of God. Thank you. Thank you very much.
God of freedom, we come before you in prayer. Hear the prayers of your people for themselves and the world. Church and our Holy Father Francis, that guided in the freedom of the Holy Spirit, he may lead the people of God in the truth of the gospel and inspire us to be true disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord us for the Church of Montreal, for our shepherd, Archbishop Christian Lipin, his auxiliary bishop, Thomas Dowd, our pastors, religious men and women, and lay faithful, that we may seek what is good and strive after our ultimate good, which is God himself. We pray to the Lord. Lord, save us For the sick, the poor, the marginalized, and all those in need of our prayers this night, that we may bring them the liberating hope of the gospel, and that God may set them free from the despair of this world. We pray to the Lord. Lord set us free. For young Christians and all young people throughout the world, that we may reju rejoice in the truth and find true freedom as God's beloved children. We pray to the Lord. Lord set us free. For each one of us gathered here, and for the prayers that remain in the silence of our hearts. We pray that the Lord who knows our needs may answer them according to his loving will for us, and free us to love him in return. We pray to the Lord. Lord, us free. Let us pray together, each in our own language, the prayer that your Son Jesus taught us. This day our daily bread, and forgive us trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the law. God our Father, we thank you for setting us free as a people created in your image and redeemed by the blood of your Son. Illumine our minds to know your will and strengthen our hearts to follow it in our daily lives. Send us your spirit to free us from sin and darkness, that we may be free in this world and live forever in the freedom of the world to come, where you live and reign with Jesus, our Savior, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.